is this the reading room? Yes, I'm Saad Manzor. And I'm Travis Howard. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back again. Yo, we have uh, one of my favorite people on earth, actually. Here. We got Ooh. Dr. Brandon Roberts, a.k.a. B. Rob. In the yo, yo, yo. Welcome, welcome, Sam. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, fellas. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. We appreciate you doing this with us, man. Yeah, it's just, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we went to the same med school. Um, Absolutely. We were really, not, the, not the same year, but, you know, big shout out to Case. Should have been yeah, the same Case. year. We'll get, we'll get into all Yeah, it. right. Case stand up. Love Case, man, man. <laughs> yeah, Great we'll get school. get into all of it. Oh, it was, it was, man. So take us back to Case, man. So tell us, uh, when you are at Case, what was your toughest class or rotation at Case? Absolutely. So, so one of the great things about Case, and I'm sure you probably said this side, is that it was pass fail, right? So, oh, yeah. we we had a very <laughs> collegial class in general, right? But obviously, yeah. it was still med school, so tons of information, like just stuff getting thrown at you left and right. But for me personally, and I've heard a couple of your of your guests say this also. Mm-hmm. I mean, easily, I would say one A was embryology. I've heard that a couple times on the pod. <laughs> one B though was histopathology. Like straight up, bro. Look, oh, like yeah. I couldn't even like get a good focus <laughs> routinely, bro. Like you know, on the microscope. So, so nah, like bro. identifying stuff was like way above my pay grade, dog. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just blessed that I passed that boy. That's the thing about case, bro. Hey, look, you 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 get you get what you need to to get. You move mm-hmm. on. And bro, yep. like histopath and embryology, like by far, like ter- I was terrible at them. Yeah, hey, no, those are they're tough. They're well, tough. Like, and then think about it now, like most things is digital, like the images you get, the Absolutely. Path, images you get. So we struggle with those micro- microscopes, and it was like, you know, yeah. wow, what? exactly. <laughs> I'm seriously, bro. Yeah. Like sometimes I should put my eyes on a boy. Like I can literally, I see all black. Like I try to move my head. I'm like, bro, this is terrible. What am I doing? I can't even see this joint. <laughs> I was Yo, garbage yeah. at that class. Yeah, bro, but hey, so hey, hey. But I'm still a doctor. Yeah. MD. There you go. MD. Exactly. Yeah. P equals MD, man. Yeah. Absolutely, man. <laughs> well, you know, you know, a case, a case. B Rob knows about this. P equals D3J. Do you remember the D3Js? Man, do I? What? <laughs> what? So have you talked about the D3Js, though? I talked about the D3Js. So, man, so I don't know, Travis, I've heard. So, man, I don't know who made. So D3Js was basically a set of notes for every class we had at Case. And basically, like the Cliff Notes, bro, it was like, you have an hour lecture, and some dude, some lady, I don't know who, wrote this, like, lecture down in, like, one page, so high yield, just stuff on a couple pages. Yeah. In D3J, so it, it would take a lecture, make it plain. Yep. And I feel like it was the website that we use, bro. D3J, mm-hmm. whoever made that the greatest on earth. Oh, big oh, shout out to the D3Js. Man. I think, you know, I, th- I met one like kind of randomly, like when I was like uh, like on rotation. It was like, a, he was an anesthesiologist. And wow. He was like, you know, he said something like, you know, you don't know me. I'm like, I don't know you. He's like, I'm Jay. I'm like, who's Jay? Like I'm Bro, Jay from D3J. Jay, Jay, Jay is like, cold. Oh, snap. Oh, I would have so got his so autograph. <laughs> D3J came through. Yeah, it was a collaboration, huh? Oh man, yeah, I and like I don't even do autographs, bro. Oh, I would have got his. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, these dudes, they literally like, um, just like I think, yeah, I think it was like you know, men and women, like you know, a couple people. They basically put together these notes were just super high yield for oh, like goodness. every lecture, yes, for every class, and it was the stuff that was on the test, and, man. Like, Listen. You know, people people would like kind of, you know, they would try to study like the books. They try to go through Robin and go through this other stuff. But then like, you know, I had I had a mentor named Sean Malone who was like, nah, D3Js. Trust yeah. me, D3Js. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was like, this is like walking like a tightrope, but uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, and then said again. Did they charge you? Did they charge you? Oh, no, bro. It's totally free. No, everyone oh, well, no, 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 You know what? They did charge. I mean, that, that oh, okay. Was so I must have had yours then, Si. Okay. No, no, like they, no, they charged because they were like four or five years ahead of me or ahead of me. And basically, they sold them for the first year or two. Gotcha. And they just leaked at that point. It just, you know, oh, it was okay. like, oh, wow. It was like a yes. mixed Like everyone had gotcha. it. It was just like, you know, like, yeah. It was, it was it a money like making scheme. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like something someone would have profited off of that. Exactly. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. It was, it was amazing, bro. Yeah, oh, man. And and you know what it also did? Like, I, I always tell people, like, you know, it kind of set us up for studying for step one, where, like, D3J was equivalent of, like, first aid. So, like, you Absolutely. Would use, yep. So, D3Js is your Absolutely. first aid. And then you would, like, kind of, you know, put information, like, 
you know, put the yep. meat on. Like supplement. It was supplement. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. And like, so a lot of people, there are a lot of med students who didn't like like first aid. I no. mean, but like we did it all throughout first, second year. So, yep. you know, yep. like yep. we had the skeleton already and then you would add in. It was just, God, it was beautiful. Oh, it was. It was, man. It yeah, was, first uh, day was the ball. Man. Yeah. No, nah, that was uh, the those were days, man. But that was the hustle. But you have to trust. You know, you got to talk to people. You got to have mentors yep. who, like, you can kind of, like, you know, talk to and be like, you sure about this? Like, yeah. uh, Absolutely. Sure. And, that, and that's how I was very fortunate, though, Sai, right? So, so I'm not sure you want to get to here already, but. I so yeah. I interviewed with your class, right? Mm-hmm. So finished college in 03, mm-hmm. um, interviewed for med school that kind of 02, 03 year. Yep, yep. And then, you know, so I played college football and I did yes. research and I was just mentally fatigued. So mm-hmm. I just needed a year. But yeah. I met Sai during the interview process in like the second look week in that case. And oh, we, yeah, I, I like we, right. we like kind of wild out, right? Like we kicked <laughs> it. I was like, yo, if this is med school, I'm going to case. Like yeah. they know how to turn up, Travis. <laughs> you, so, up? you turned up? Yo, we turned up. Oh, during that was, second look uh, for sure. It was out of control. Yeah, yeah wow. man. And I was like, yeah. And I heard you guys <laughs> mention like Cincinnati being like a mini HBCU. Yeah, right. Like when we was at Case, we were deep too, though. Yep, yep, yep. Like, yep. Yeah, super, super deep. <laughs> That's what's up. And so, yeah. but I needed, I needed a break, man. And so it was, it was love. Like, as a senior in college, you know, I um, you know, finished my senior season. I actually tore my ACL my last year, so I'm also mm-hmm. rehabbing a knee injury. Yeah. And I remember like getting to Case. I got in a bunch of other med schools. Um, I'm from this area, so from Northeast Ohio. And I remember wanting to go to Case, and I just called them. I was like, "Hey, like, here's my deal. I want to come here, but I want to come next year." And they were yeah. like, "Sure." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh, let's go." And they say, and the so yeah. I was just in the spot for the following year's class. So that's how Sai got ahead of me. Mm-hmm. And frankly, man, just to me, that was a blessing because you know Sai, one of the most down to earth dudes on the planet. You know, like literally everything from like where I lived in Cleveland Heights and Shaker Heights, that all came from Sai, bro. <laughs> like how to study, yeah. kind of what like what to focus on, Sai, and that whole crew. You know, um, all, all the you know uh, yeah, all, Brooke, all the cats. Olu, yeah, Brooke, Andrew absolutely, yeah, Olu, yeah, exactly, yeah, Anand, absolutely, man. So, I mean, having you guys a year ahead of me, that I mean that that made my experience. And then I had a great community too in my class. So, exactly. So, exactly. Rob, where'd you play college ball? Yeah, man. So. I went to a Division three school called Washington University in St. Louis. So Wash mm-hmm. right? Like so, you know, people in medicine know Wash U. Oh, wait, 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 um, before so, we go there, can you just tell us about like, like you, you killed high school football though? Like uh, you were dominant. This dude was so, dominant. It's funny that you, and so so hey, it's funny that you mentioned that. So, I, so <laughs> I, I obviously had a good career in high school. So like my senior year of high school, mm-hmm. and I went to. It's now a powerhouse in football. It's called Archbishop Hoban. It's a Catholic high school here mm-hmm. in Akron, Ohio. So yeah. now, literally, over the past 10 years, Hoban has won six state championships in the past 10 wow. years. So now they're <laughs> power, but back then we were not. Like, we barely oh, had nice. enough people to kind of, like, you know, do a full practice. You know, we have, you know, 25 wow. to 30 wow. kids. Wow. Yeah. And so it's much different now. They're 100 deep. They got six uniforms. They got strength coaches. Totally different vibe now. <laughs> Wow. But so so I actually started my high school career at a boarding school here in North East Ohio called Rest Reserve Academy. Um, I was not stellar as an athlete and I frankly was out of shape, bro. I didn't really start lifting. I just didn't know what it took. I transferred to, uh, to Archbishop Hoban, uh, a more traditional high school, a non boarding school for my last two years. And I played uh, as a junior. I just I played offensive line, though. Like I wasn't out here carrying the ball, you know, okay. you know. I should say defensive line as a junior started mm-hmm. played some special teams. We had a good team. We didn't make the playoffs or anything like that, but you know, I was, I was a good high school athlete. Mm-hmm. Definitely not at that time. I really had no ambitions to play in college. Now as a senior, again, we didn't have a ton of dudes. And so uh, the coach was like, yo, we need you to play offensive line too. And here's a, here's a, here's a catch though. <laughs> growing up, at, growing up as a kid, I was always like a running back and linebacker. So I'm out there shining, right? Thriving, yeah, yeah, hitting yeah. cats, you know, sh- you know, just out here. People knew me. Yeah, yeah. But after high ball. school, I went away to high school. So kind of, you know, got lost to follow up, you know, as some of our patients do for two mm-hmm. years of high school. Cause I was at a boarding school mm-hmm. and I came to Hoban and cats like, Oh, I remember you from Pee Wee, but, my team needed me on the line mm. and I wasn't really a lineman. I'm like, dude, let me get the rock. Let me, I want to yeah, run over yeah, some cats. Absolutely. That ain't <laughs> but, a shine position. Exactly. I want to shine position. 
And it's kind of hard to shine as a DN and the guard, right? Offensive right, guard. Right, right. And, but, you know, I tell you, I actually love playing offensive line. It was crazy because my coaches yeah. they got me doing, like, a lot of movement on the line. So I was out there basically leading running backs out in space, able oh, to smash did. linebackers <laughs> and corners. We did a lot of plays called traps where people wouldn't see me oh, coming. Yeah. I'm just oh, like, yeah. like Man, you, you know, know. blindsiding people. <laughs> it play, was so online. much fun. Oh grade, yeah, man. you I know, so you already the know. The trap, man. That <laughs> Absolutely, was, was I'm out them. there, bro, on the yeah. tall sweeps, Travis. I'm out there leading the way, just smashing nice. these little dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, it was, it was a lot of fun. So it's just a time in my life, frankly, where you know I didn't really want to do it, but I mm-hmm. think sometimes in life, people see things in you that you'll be good at. Yeah. And sometimes mm-hmm. it takes a pushing from someone else to pull something that's been inside of you out of you uh-huh. that you really didn't know was there. Yep. And frankly, I think that applies to life, bro. It you did, know, they had to, they had to kind of pull it out of me, and I, I loved it. And you know, I was hesitant, but I loved it. You might not have the vision at the time. Absolutely. The important part is you tried, you stepped up, and, and yeah, you found absolutely. Out you, liked it. you took you the risk. Yeah, you took that's the right. risk. So. Yep. Boarding school. Tell me how you, you know, not everybody goes to boarding school. How'd you get involved? Yeah, man. So it's an experience. I've had some great experiences in my life, man. So I grew up in Akron Public Schools. So I went to K through 8th in Akron Public Schools. And so this boarding school was in a city called Hudson, Ohio, not far from where I live to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's only about 30, maybe not even 30 minutes from downtown Akron, right? But they were trying to get more diversity. They came to the inner city to recruit kind of high achieving, high achieving minorities. And basically, I had a full ride. My parents were like, yo, you got to try this. And so I went out there for two years, man. So I lived on campus. I don't know if you guys ever read The Catcher in the Rye. It's a book that we read in high school. And it was weird because I was at Western Reserve Academy reading this book. And it was basically like basically reading about what I was going through. It was like oh, a, about a kid at a boarding school, mm-hmm. you know, very preppy. Like we had basically college type of classes. You had some classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, some mm-hmm. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then we had Saturday school, bro. Oh, Saturday wow. school every morning from eight to 12. Mm-hmm. Then on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we had to wear like blazers. We always had to wear khakis and blazers, but like school uniforms mm-hmm. on those Wednesdays and Saturdays. So it was... We had chapel where we kind of had to meet together as a school. It was it was different. It was uh, uh-huh. it helped me to grow up and honestly it prepared me for the for college. Like I went to college and smashed it because you know I had lived on my own for two years as a kid. You're already ready, exactly. I was ready. I was ready, man. So you know, moving from Akron to St. Louis, eight hours away, was was not a big deal. It was not a it was not a a moment that was too much for me. Mm-hmm. But you know, the reality was, um, Rest Reserve Academy was in the same city as a normal high school. Uh, and it was tough, man, because some of the normal high schools would come around sometimes and just hearing about their experiences. Yeah, I just wanted a more normal experience. So I just talked to my parents. And I was like, you know what? I, I wanted to go to a regular school. They weren't mm-hmm. having it for me to go to a public school back in Akron. So like, here are your choices. There are kind of three parochial schools here in the city. They're like, you can go to one of these three. Frankly, the one I ended up at, Archbishop Hoban, was the only one that called back. Uh, this was mm-hmm. like literally a few weeks before school. So I'm sure their classes were set, yeah. but they called back. You know, the weird thing is my, my parents love me, bro, because I had a free ride at this school that back then probably cost, you know, 30, 35K a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had to pay full tuition at Hoban, you know, and so but they let me do it. They, you know, they, they, they uh, I asked and I received. And mm-hmm. frankly, I went to Hoban. I yeah, had a great experience, and they prepared me well also for the next level. So, you yeah, know, the rest is history, man. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Awesome. The folks the folks came through, man. Oh, Big up so to you. Cool. I'm sure being in those settings and changing schools, I changed schools too. And, and it's uh, it teaches you how to adjust and, and adapt to people and situations. I, I, I'm sure that presented its challenges for you. Uh, if they're attracting minority talent, right. you know, <clears throat> You know, you may you may be one of very few. How did you deal with that? Yeah, so it's funny, um, especially when it comes to attracting you know African Americans at at Rest Reserve. It was not a uh, very diverse school when it comes to that. Now we did have some international students though, so it was the first okay. time in my life that I had man, I had friends from Japan, from Saudi Arabia, wow. um, like they really attract a worldwide kind of class. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, from uh, South America. And so it was diverse in that sense. And that was great because that's really my first experience. Akron is not diverse in that sense. Yeah. Um, it's kind of either black or white, a little bit more diverse now with you know, some immigrant populations. But back then I didn't have that, man. So that that was good for me. 
Um, but you know, I went to Akron Public Schools for, like I said, K through eight, um, and actually started in junior high school or late elementary school. My family moved to kind of a, a little bit better kind of, kind of middle class area, and that school was not very diverse. So kind of being one of a few yeah. was not new to me. Um, but I've also had this this kind of outright devotion to my people. You know, yeah. and so I've always had the balance, yo, like you're in a predominantly white environment, but let's stay true to yourself. Let's never lose who we are. Remember oh, where, you, where you actually came from. So I've always had that. And I've always, had it to this day, yeah. right? Like, you know, even at work, <laughs> I'm the only black uh, anesthesiologist. Um, I've kind of always been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, frankly, yeah. Um, which is a shame because it's such a great field. I want to attract more of us to the field. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know what? I think one thing Saad and, you know, I think my family and my friends can say is that I am unapologetically me and yeah. I bring myself <laughs> to every situation yeah. and I'm not going to try to put the front. Now, granted, are there times where, uh, you know, I might change my diction <laughs> um, yeah, right. Like you know, I, I can't, I can't talk to side at a bachelor party that way. I talk in the boardroom, but I think you will never say, "Who is this dude?" You know, right, like it's, right. it's, I will bring my true self to every situation. And, Th- there's and, levels and to it, and right? Yeah. There's, yeah. Le- there's levels to code switches. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. So yeah, that's so good. Now, so, uh, so how was that? So how was that transition? Speaking of like you know that that whole situation, like how was it at Wash U, and how and what made you choose Wash U? I guess when you were uh... yeah, man. So a number of reasons. One, I had a cousin at Wash U who was a few years ahead of me, so she kind of hyped it up. She okay. was in the business world, uh, or she's a business kind of major, um, so I knew about it a little bit. And I don't know about you guys, but Wash U, I was probably man like a freshman in high school, and I started to get like correspondence from them. And I'm like, what is this school? And then so my cousin ends up there and I'm like, okay, this is where my cousin go. And then while she was D3, I'm kind of a, I was like a perfect D3 athlete. Like I had a good career. Mm-hmm. I was like all state honorable mention as a defensive end, as a senior. So, you know, I kind of like, I had some, uh, some minor accolades. We had made our first state playoffs in I think the school's history my senior year of high school. <laughs> with 25. And uh, so we started, I had a little bit of recognition, but again, I played the, the non kind of glamorous positions, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. while she was division three, same conference as Case and University of Chicago mm-hmm. at the time, Carnegie Mellon, John Hopkins. So they called it back then the nerdy nine. Um, <laughs> okay. And uh, so the head coach is an Ohioan or grew up in Ohio and he would come to Ohio to recruit. He would talk to my head coach at Hoban, like, you got some smart kids that feel like they would fit in at Wash U. Mm-hmm. We would talk. The opportunity presented itself for me to play football. And frankly, Wash U was the only school that kind of even allowed me the opportunity to play football. I did get some minor recruitment letters from a few D3 schools, mm-hmm. a few D2 schools, no scholarship offers to play football. And frankly, I was ready to be done with football, bro, um, after, um, after high school. Wow. But you know what? Um, Wash U came through with that bread. They made that financial aid package nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a chance to play football, bro. I was like, let's do it. So uh, it was kind of somewhat familiar with my cousin, mm-hmm. the opportunity to continue my athletic career, even though that wasn't high on my list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously had the degrees I wanted. I majored in biomedical engineering, wow. uh, which is another story. Um, <laughs> we want to hear that story. Too. And then and then you get the campus, man. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Wash U, but the campus is off the chain. Like one of the prettiest campuses in the country. So once you step on, you're like, yo, like this, all this is here. And yeah. so, yeah, once you get there, it's like, yeah. And the weird thing is, my first financial aid package at Wash U was not enough. I had full rides to go elsewhere, man. Kent State Honors Program, uh-huh. Xavier University here in Cincinnati, uh, uh, Catholic School. I had full rides. And I was like, you know what? I'm not about to pay, you know, 15 k a year to go mm-hmm. to any school when I can get a full ride. And so right. I, I told the coaches, I told the financial aid office, I can't come. It, it's not worth it for me. I don't want that student loan debt. And they came through. They came through with some more bread, bro. So wow. <laughs> and I ended up going there, and I, you know what? It was great, man. So if things don't <laughs> fall into place, met my wife there. You know, yeah. um, oh, got some yeah. great friends from there. I, you know, St. Louis is like a second home to me. You oh, know, wow. it was it was terrific, terrific. Oh, that's awesome. Man. That's, that's awesome, awesome, man. So wait, so how did you choose like BME? Were you just kind of like I, I want to do BME, or is it just kind of like you know? Yes. That's a good question, man. So, you know, at that time, so this is 1999 when I finished high school, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like BME was not like the end thing. Now BME is hella hot. 
Like it is. people go into BME. <laughs> but back then it wasn't. I think frankly, once I stepped on Washington's campus, they only had like two or three like graduating classes. So it was kind of a new degree. Oh, um okay. but I chose it, frankly, it was just someone who poured into me as a high school student. Like one of my mom's coworkers was like, you know what? You seem like you'd be a good engineer. And I was like, I don't even know what they do, but if you say so, like, I might look into it. <laughs> look into and biomedical it. <laughs> sounds like it's fire. They're like, they okay, right. like, you guys out here designing, like, biomedical devices, let me get it. I, so, frankly, I didn't know what was going on. It sounded cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know anyone who was in it. I do have an uncle who's an engineer, but not biomedical. Um, it just sounded like something I would be interested, interested in. Always been kind of had an affinity for the sciences and the mathematics and the application of both of those. And that's what engineering is, you know? Right. Um, and so, yeah, man, BME was where it was at. And, you know, <laughs> the rest is history. I never worked in the industry like Travis. I think Travis is also an engineer, right? Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I never worked in the um, the industry. I went straight from um, college to med school after a year break. But, um, but. Oh, I wait, 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 wait. Well, well, you, you got to talk about the football experience there. You, you were dominating yeah. there. Like, absolutely. Now, yeah. Now, it's funny because <laughs> when it comes to the experiences in football in college versus high school, I definitely have more of a dominating experience in college. So it's a bit uh, of a late bloomer, man. So yeah, that's, that's I think normal. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah. So I think one thing is, you know, I'm my birthday is in September. Right. And I started school at four and then turned five. Mm. So a lot of kids, a lot of times nowadays you see parents red shirting their kids. They yep. want their kids to be the, the like the old heads in the class. Right. Uh-huh. But my mom was like, yo, first of all, if I don't got to pay for another year of daycare, my parents were like, <laughs> another year of daycare, so start school. But I was, you know That's what I'm saying? Like, they, they ain't have red like that, bro. Yeah. And so they was like, okay, if I don't got to pay for more year, we will. But then I was ready, you know? And yeah. so they knew, they knew what I had in me. And so I started yeah. school. As you know, as a four year old turned five in September, but I was always one of the youngest. But I, because of that, like, even as a senior, but like, straight up, bro, I didn't really start even getting facial hair till like I was a late junior in high school. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was, I, you know, I didn't really start feeling out until kind of late. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I didn't really start getting stronger until I was in college. You know, mm-hmm. but seriously, I was just straight athletic ability. But yeah. I got to wash you, man, and I was just able to ball. And a lot of that was frankly, uh, just kind of a like, dog-like determination, man. Just mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just believed in myself. Frankly, when I first stepped on campus, I was a skeptic. I was like, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. I remember some dudes from the football team picking me up that summer for summer football camp at the St. Louis airport. And I remember like, these are grown men, like, <laughs> like ripped up. And that was not me then, bro. So yeah. I mean, I stepped on a college football campus as like a like a maybe two hundred pound linebacker, I finished at like two hundred forty five pounds. So oh, I, I gained uh, I gained I gained forty five uh, pounds of mostly muscle, and because I had started lifting and started eating, you know, like eating yeah. a lot. Um, and frankly, you know, Great. I filled out. I um, mm-hmm. you know lifted hard, and I was just started to blast. I always I always had the athletic ability. Mm-hmm. I had to blast people, bro. And, you know, some, oh, some. I remember, I remember you showing me like a VHS tape of like you just ah. destroying like little yeah. VHS. Like, oh, hey, these kids don't even know what VHS is nowadays, man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> He yeah, didn't have to say VHS, so he could have just said, I, I, you show me a tape. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, my my no. college football highlights on the VHS, Travis. It was. Oh, no, he dated you. Man, bro. that's crazy. <laughs> but uh, but they're worth it, though. Oh, man, these little dudes are coming out the line, and then you, they just get they just disappear, man. The soldiers yeah, bro. everything. It was awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, man. So, so you, I mean, you broke records there. I know you had a couple injuries, but I mean, you are, I'm not sure to, to this day. I mean, you're like you know, Heisman Award for all of, uh, all of college football, basically. Yeah, man. Blessed, bro. So wow. here, here's the deal, Impressive. man. I go to, I go to Wash U. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. So I went to Wash U. You know, Wash U, man, we play, you know, other D3 schools, obviously. You play, I say the, the biggest crowd I probably ever played under, in my time at Wash U might have been three or four thousand. I frankly played in big with bigger crowds watching in high school. Like when we played LeBron's high school here in Akron, LeBron with the St. Vincent St. Mary, it's a big rivalry. Literally, we would have like six to ten thousand people there, right? Mm-hmm. And I went to college, like no one's at the D3 games, you know, for the most part. Some some of these small college towns, the city kind of comes out, but a few thousand people. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? I put in work and as a senior in college. 
Um, I was nominated to be what's called the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete from my institution. And then they pick um, one athlete, one college senior every year to win what's called the Academic Heisman. It's now yeah. called the Campbell Trophy. Mm -hmm. um, back then was called the Health South Dratty Trophy. Mm -hmm. So I was invited to this big uh, dinner in New York City, had a big night out. It was like we lived it up, man. Went to uh, went out in New York, kicked it with a, uh, was about 15 other dudes from D D1, D2, uh, a few from D3. And then mm -hmm. they picked one of us to be what's called the Campbell Trophy or the Health South Dratty winner. So mm -hmm. I won it back in 2002, man. And right, so I, to this day, man, I'm the only non-Division One athlete to ever win it. Um, like some I of my other that. colleagues that have won, Peyton Manny won it his senior year, Tim mm -hmm. Tebow. So, you wow. know, well-known college guys right now. Oh, you know, uh, I, had a, I was going to say I had a classmate because I was a genetic. Oh, yeah, at Ohio, Ohio State. State. Absolutely. Craig, Craig won Krenzel, he won it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. Craig Krenzel won it after me. Yep, you got it. Um, trying to think, Justin Herbert, who's now the quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers, won nice. his senior year. Wow! So yeah, man, I'm in big time company. I'm actually that's going right. to this day, and you're in the Hall yep. of Fame. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I have a have my, the, the trophies in the Hall of Fame, and my name's on the trophy, and I think my picture's wow. up in the uh, uh, College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta. It was nice. I went out there a few years ago. At I was at a wedding, mm -hmm. and they gave me like a VIP tour, man. It was dope oh, to kind awesome. of just see see my picture, see my name on the plaque. And it was, yeah, it's amazing, man. So just, you know what? It went from not being recruited to just a dude in high school mm -hmm. and to all of that, bro. So as yeah. of now, the, the only non-D1 winner, and it's 30-something years later still, man. So Still. Even they yep. changed the name of the award, and they still the only one. Man, still the only one, bro. <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? That's right. awesome. That is yeah. awesome. What, how, how do you, what do you think um, caused you to stand out and be the winner? you know even to mm -hmm. this day yeah that's not that's good that's a good question i think one obviously the institution right if like i don't i don't like to to um kind of make fun of or down talk any other institution but i think being at washu alone uh was 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 huge right it has a great academic name and it obviously did well there i finished with like you know three five three six and bme right so Crazy. yeah three wow. five three six and bme you know, I was an mm -hmm. academic All-American when it came to football. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I almost had a, like 450 tackles out throughout my career in uh, college. So I was just a tackling machine. <laughs> um, and I was very wow. involved. So it's not just about sports. It's about community service. Like, mm -hmm. man, I was – I volunteered as a tutor. I did research at the med school. Mm -hmm. I was involved in the, the gospel choir, man, at Walsh U. I, um, you know, was involved in the Association of Black Students, the National Society of Black Engineers. So I was hey, like, I it. took advantage of the opportunity there, you know, and so yeah, it wasn't Shout like I was Nesby. just, <laughs> yeah, Nesby stand up, <laughs> Nesby stand up. And it's funny because, you know, because I knew I wasn't going into, uh, to kind of the engineering field, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't go to conferences and stuff, um, but, I, you know, I went to meetings occasionally. I was kind of more involved with what's called the uh, Black Pre-Med Society there at Wash U. But I, no. I kind of did everything, man. And so um, like I it. think all of that all? stuff combined, man, they just say hey, they saw something in me. And it was like, man, this dude is doing good stuff. And here I am, man. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Man. How, how, did you, man, how did you get the, the, the energy, the drive? How did you overcome? How did you do it? How'd you have the time? I mean, that's like, I don't even know how you did all these things. That's yeah, no, nah, I think you're exactly right, man. So I think for one, you know, just, just given the fact that I've always been involved in sports, right? You know, I played football and baseball in high school. Mm -hmm. At Brush Reserve, we had, actually had to play three sports a year. So you, you had to learn how to manage your time. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I like to say to some of your listeners, man, I, th I, I view time as a form of currency, right? I think if you don't tell it where to go, you'll wonder where it went. Mm -hmm. In the in the Big thing is I always did better in the fall, in season, than I did in the spring academically. Mm -hmm. And I think because my schedule was more regimented. Like, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, you know you got to be at practice from this time to this time. You know you got to lift on these days or run on these days. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't be on that BS in the fall. Nope. But in the spring, it's like, yeah, so we, we didn't do spring football. We did spring conditioning for about, I like, like eight weeks of the semester. And but it was early like, in the morning. So once you were done, you were done. Mm -hmm. But I found other things to do to fill my time, right? Uh -huh. And so <laughs> it's not like I did poorly, but I always did better in the fall compared to the spring. And so, you know, it just kind of made my schedule regimented. And then I think just the drive, man, was 
I've always had this kind of dog like determination to succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, first physician in the family. Um, wow. I, come from, I come from a big family, man, and um, very proud to be from Northeast Ohio, from Akron. But a lot of loved ones here um, who kind of looked at me to kind of be successful, man. And when things got hard, I would think back on like, yeah, I've got to do this, not just for me, but for them, bro. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. to this day, bro, like I, I, they're still proud of me, man. And so yeah, I'm so glad yeah. I persevered and I pushed through. I, I see them to this day and they're proud, you know, and, and they reap some of the, the benefits, bro. Like we out here hosting holidays at yeah, the crib, yeah. we got a nice, a nice crib, you know, like, you know, <laughs> exactly. we, we, we oftentimes, you know, reach back and, and help those in need. That's one of our models. And so, uh, you know, gotcha. I'm just, yeah, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And your inspiration man. too. I mean, there's going to be like younger kids, like kind of just watching your cousins and nephews, nieces, nephews, like, you know, B-Rob did it. B-Rob's out Absolutely. here. We're at B-Rob's house with a holiday party, yo. Absolutely. B-Rob's Absolutely. Killing the game. Yeah, man. So, yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And uh, Absolutely. So, so I was going to say, so, so back to like, you know, the football and like, you took a year off, basically. Can you tell us what you did with your year off between uh, undergrad and uh, med school when they held that spot for you at Case? Absolutely, man. Things fell in line perfectly. So I, I go to this uh, National Football Foundation in New York, right? It's a big old dinner. They and they induct the College Football Hall of Fame every year um, at this dinner. And they have a presentation for this program that they have called the Play It Smart Program. And so what the Play It Smart program is, is that the National Football Foundation sends academic coaches into inner city schools to serve as a counselor. And it's, it's particularly a counselor for the football team. And it help with kind of uh, ACT, SAT prep um, to try to kind of be a mentor to the kids in inner cities. And they were starting a program in St. Louis at an inner city wow. school called Vashon. They call it the V in yeah. St. Louis. And I was like, yo, like that would be perfect. The pay mm -hmm. was terrible. <laughs> but it was a perfect job. Like I yeah. coached football, bro. I was an assistant as a uh, defensive um, defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. I helped uh, run our defense on the junior varsity. It was the first oh, year that Bashan had ever made the um, state playoffs. We actually won a playoff game against oh, wow. a Catholic school there in St. Louis. And mm -hmm. we had a couple. We had one kid who's actually the coach at Bashan now, who went mm -hmm. to the pros. He went to Missouri and then the pros later. Oh wow! Um, like we had some dudes, bro. They just need a little discipline. They needed uh -huh. someone there to, to keep encouraging them that they can do it. That's but man, awesome. we volu we volunteered. We um, you know, I held ACT, SAT prep classes, kind of help them get, um, you know, eligible and qualify under the NCAA clearinghouse. Yes. So we kind of, we kind of did, did it all, man. And it was, it was, it was a fun year. Mm -hmm. Um, I also started to really get closer to my wife. You know, we kind of mm -hmm. started dating hard during that year that, off because, you know, yes. yeah, yeah, that man. So we got closer then, frankly, maybe without that year, I don't know if we're married to this day, man. So we're 15 years in now. So. Well, yeah, that's important, man. That balance is important. You know, mm -hmm. it's not yes, all sir. about career and becoming a doctor. You got to make sure you try and live a full life, man. Oh, and yes. And like that's the thing. You only live once, right? Do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, yep. Yep. You only live once, man. And my big thing is you like, don't have regrets. You know, just like, live life mm -hmm. to the fullest and don't have regrets. Because frankly, on our deathbeds, we are not going to be worried about houses and cars. Mm -hmm. We're no. worried about experiences, right? And so exactly. I can say I've lived life to the fullest, man. So. Thank God oh, for that. Man. Still, still living it. Still living yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so so like take us to Case now. So you're at Case, and then um, what what specialties were you considering at Case? Hey, so I listened to my guy Sai. So Sai put me on the road to success. Y'all talked about that yet? Oh yes, we have. <laughs> absolutely, bro. So Ooh. Sai put me on the road to success. I kind of went into med school thinking I was be a pediatrician. Kind of always had affinity for children. They've always kind of been drawn to me. I'm kind of goofy and, oh, man, you know, uh, can be loud. <laughs> um, but goofy, so I thought I'd be a pediatrician. By the way. Yeah, yeah. Say what? Well, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, and so I thought I'd be a pediatrician. I remember one of my cousins was like, you know, pediatricians they don't necessarily make that much. I was like, I'll be good. <laughs> and so it was crazy. And so I put me on the road to success. And frankly. <laughs> I didn't care for the other letters, but at anesthesia was where it was at, man. So yeah. radiology just was not my calling. I, felt, so I don't really do eyeballs. I can put my contacts in. Outside of that, I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, and then and we had Durham, a couple like, friends with anesthesia, right? I mean, we had a couple absolutely. friends. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you know, some people in your class, you had uh, uh, Olu and Anna. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had done it the year before me. Uh, but outside of that, man, my exposure was basically during like the, our surgery rotation. I'm yeah. like, yo, my feet hurt. I'm like, Yo, I'm getting cramps in my forearm. And I was an athlete, bro. So I'm like, yo, I'm not built for this surgery life. I, it's cool what y'all do, 
But I'm telling you, I ain't trying to be standing up here for hours on end. Yeah. Well, like I'm tired. <laughs> but over there, they they talking, they having a good time. I'm like, what's what's oh, that man. about? I, I remember it. doing like little rotation of anesthesia. I'm like, oh, this is where it's at. Procedural, oh. cerebral, mm-hmm. kind of technical. Yeah. I mean, it's still a nice mix of medicine and procedures. I was like, oh yes, mm. I'm doing that. And so, um, yeah, you know, Brandy uh, Singfield. I remember her was kind of big. Mm-hmm. She was big into uh, anesthesia at the time. And then, you know, like Olu and Anon, bro, talking to them. Yeah. And yeah, they got they put me on what I had to do, yeah. and the rest is history. Oh, I love it, man. You ended up at a major program again. Absolutely. Went back to St. Louis for residency and fellowship. Absolutely. So Washu, undergrad St. Okay. Louis, Case Med, went back to Wash U for, un, uh, for residency and fellowship, which was great, man, because, you know, St. Louis is a very black city. I love taking care of our people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then St. Louis has a mix of everything. You know, we do. It's very academic. We mm-hmm. do transplants. But traumas galore. Like I was able to do some very kind of high level cases as a resident, um, very busy services. Mm-hmm. But yet, like th- I didn't have to get shipped out anywhere to get an experience. Everything right. was right there in one place. And that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. yeah, that's... So what's your favorite, your favorite, what, what do you like to do the most in anesthesiology? I think pediatrics, pediatrics, pediatric anesthesia is so nice because I just I feel like it's very fulfilling. One of the things that I did not enjoy a lot about adult anesthesia is I think sometimes we put adults who don't have um, necessarily a, a great quality of life on the other side of their surgery through some things that I think if they really knew uh, what was on the other end um, that they probably wouldn't even go through. Like if I have a if I have a diagnosis where you know what, I only have six months to live, Live. I probably will not get some of the surgeries that I've kind of done oh, yeah. anesthesia yeah. for, you know? Yeah. I was just, I'm just going to go ahead and live my six months and go on to heaven, bro. Or you um, see it. You, you, you yeah, see it yeah. You, you see it. And I'm just like, man, this just seems so pointless. Yeah. Uh, but for kids, even when they have like terminal diagnosis, you never feel like, you never feel like, why are we doing this? You always feel like, Okay, like who knows? Maybe there's a miracle on the end. I mean, kids bounce back though. Kids, I've seen kids kids. bounce back. They heal faster than we do as adults. Like Mm -hmm. they do, man. And so I've seen some incredible turnovers, uh, (laughs) or or kids turn a corner for the better. Um, Mm -hmm. obviously not every situation ends like that. Yeah, but um, I just feel like it's a lot more fulfilling. I like the fact that in pediatric anesthesia, literally. One day, well, one case, you can be doing a one kilo baby in the next case at a 150 kilo teenager. Like, I wow. like the variety, right? Yeah, um, I like the mix and kind of kind of pathology that these uh, kids um, kind of present to the hospital with. And mm-hmm. I'm actually at a, my current practice is one where we have a regional burn center. So I actually do a fair amount of adults, too. So I, mean, okay. I had like a, I had a 45 year old today and a 35 year old today and then uh, i've had 80 year olds who have uh burns Mm -hmm. and so uh, i like i still like caring for an occasional adult but i do like kind of being primarily primarily pediatrics it's a very different but it's nice to get a little mix when you finally go back to pediatrics it's awesome man i came back right full Uh, circle right absolutely i have so much respect for what you do just like from a technical standpoint and interventional radiology, when you're placing mm-hmm. a line on your mm-hmm. procedures on these little babies, on these tough, little kids, tough. And absolutely, you have to be so you have to you have to pay Subtle. so much it's so much attention to detail and be meticulous and on yes. it. And so you do this day in and day out. A lot of respect. Oh my god! Yeah, absolutely. as you know, very challenging, man. Like some days are better than others, but that's what keeps you going to work. It's, <laughs> it's I think it's never monotonous. Again, you know. That, you know, that 500 uh, grammar mm-hmm. comes to the OR, bro. They're delicate, man. You know, lines are tough. Right. Their intubations mm-hmm. are tough. They're, you know, they don't respond to anesthesia, you know, mm-hmm. so well sometimes. And so uh, it's a cert- the stress of surgery you know, very well sometimes. So it's a challenge. But uh, that's, I mean, it's not boring. It's not boring. And, you know, I have a great group, frankly. It's mm-hmm. when you have good people to work with you. Yeah. I mean, it makes life absolutely. so much easier. So, yeah. absolutely. absolutely, man. So, like, just for like people who are like not in medicine, I guess. So, could you just kind of describe the size of like the smallest baby you've had to do any procedure on? Oh, smallest baby, I would say would be probably like four hundred, a four hundred gram preemie, five hundred gram preemie. Like that's the size um, of like what? What would you say? Like, a- oh man, listen. Um, I mean, <laughs> basically my hand. Wow. Yeah, can fit wow. easily in my hand. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. So yeah, yeah, that's that's always tough. You know, even transporting those kids can be very delicate. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some places that you know won't even transport those kids. They'll do a procedure at the bedside. We yeah. haven't gotten to that point in our um where I'm at currently, mm-hmm. um, where we do routinely those little little babies at the bedside. But it is nice to to do them in the NICU as opposed to having to to uh, to move them. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, man, it's a it's it's a challenge, but it's it's fulfilling. That's what it's, that's what life seems about. like. It is. I mean, that's I was gonna say mean. also like I mean, you're back an actor, and I mean, how do you, yeah. like, I mean, I'm sure like the parents who come in, they see an African American pediatric anesthesiologist. Yeah. I mean, I'm right. sure that's like price those are priceless moments when they see absolutely. You know, and I'm sure it's like that. You know, I guess Sai, you probably don't see a ton of patients. I guess, uh, I guess more so Travis and his in his practice. But yeah, man, you know, they, their faces light up. I've gotten like, oh, so you the you the doctor? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I know, me, man. You know? It's the juice. You know? It's the juice. Yeah. It helps you go. It helps. It helps you, going, it helps you man. Uh, I mean, shoot, I've had even people in the OR. You know, mm-hmm. we live in days of travel, traveling nurses and you know, patient care techs and mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of ancillary staff. They're like, oh, oh, you, you the doctor? I just literally mm-hmm. had a lady the other day with a new PCA <laughs> in the OR, and I've been had burger with her for a couple of weeks, bro. And she was like. You a doctor? I was like, girl, you can put some respect on my name. You see that MD next to it? <laughs> and she didn't even know I was an anesthesiologist, bro. She thought I was just some dude with an OR talking. Yeah. All the time. All yeah. the time until they realize yeah. you see the face, the turn of the head. It's just a little gesture. And you're like, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah absolutely, man. So oh, that's awesome, man. This yes, really, yes. That's, that's 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 fuel, man. That's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love it, man. But we really appreciate you doing this with us. We're gonna get you out of here on this last question. So absolutely, what would you what would you tell like a student athlete like in college or like in high school about you know trying to make a decision between like you know going the pros and like coming into medicine or something like that? Like what would you what would be your advice? I guess if they're interested. Great question. Yeah, when it comes to student athletes, I think the big thing is just like put in the work. You know why they're there. I heard you say on one of the podcasts. Uh, saw that someone you heard someone say some of the best doctors are athletes i think you said division one athletes i would just say athletes no i think athletes. um yeah, yeah. because it's a part of just being on the team as you mentioned mm-hmm. um i think you know being on a team teaches you so many qualities right like mm-hmm. you kind of have to be teachable and coachable it's mm-hmm. very important in medicine mm-hmm. um you have to kind of be okay of taking calculated risks Mm-hmm. Um, kind of gauging your fears and realizing that sometimes purpose lies on the other side of that fear. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as an athlete, you kind of understand that like really opportunity sometimes only really dances with people who are out there on the dance floor. So mm-hmm. if you're not like, you know, if you're if you're timid, if you're afraid to kind of step out there, try new things, take risks in certain situations, it's, it, it probably won't work out. I kind of mm-hmm. always have the mentality that, you know, I never I never uh, lose. I either win or I learn. Yeah, um, I, mean. I think team sports teach you that, mm-hmm. um, no matter if you're successful or not, right? Like, mm-hmm. I think I was talk, talking to you guys, you know, before we started recording about my son's soccer team. They're not mm-hmm. very good, but I think he's learning so much as just exactly. being on a team, right? Yep. So there's there's value in that. There is. Other, um, also, man, I think a lot of people think visible means valuable, and I don't think that's the case. Like, mm-hmm. I view my life like I, I want to be the salt of the earth. Of the earth. Like, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Like, I'm okay. I like, saw this powerful, right? You don't really see it, but you know, you know when it's there, right? Yeah, and so, yeah. like, I'm okay. Like, I don't need to be a dude having 20,000 Twitter followers or TikTok followers. Mm-hmm. I want my life to be meaningful, bro. I, I want to be the salt of the earth. So, I'm yeah. okay, like, not being highly visible, but mm-hmm. no, I've been here. Yes. And, you know, I think Team Sports teach you that, bro. Like, the center on the offensive line is not going to be the dude signing a bunch of autographs. Nope. But he's he's important. One of the most important people on the field. Right? Like and so, yeah. you know, keep that in mind, man. Visibility does not mean value. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay. Like, you know, you know, do, you know, serve your role uh, and just realize that, like, there's so much in store for you. You just Absolutely. keep putting the work, man. And, you know, and share, share your gifts. Man, it's, just, it's so much, man. I think people are sometimes afraid to share their gifts, but I view gifts as like being fruit from a tree, bro. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you when you think about it, fruit from a tree is not it does not benefit that tree at all, right? Mm-hmm. An individual tree does not benefit from the fruit that they bear. That mm-hmm. fruit is meant for other things, for animals to enjoy, mm-hmm. or for other trees to grow from that fruit, right? Like, mm-hmm. share your gifts, man. You have so much to give this world, um, so don't man, be afraid you, to give it. You better preach. 
<laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I feel like I feel it, bro. You got me in my flow, so I, what? Right, For real, organ. bro. Let's go. Let's go. Run it back. Run it back. Run it right. Right, oh, man, man. I love that. I love that, man. man. Oh, that's no, that's awesome advice. It's absolutely true, man. That's that's exactly it's, right. It's man. true. I think in, in your life, in your in your uh, path, it's really like it's right on because you when you talk about change of positions in football and going from you know to going from like taking a rock and running to them being on the line, you know, absolutely. Like you learn the value and the pivot, you learn the value absolutely in, in, in the position that maybe you, you don't shine, but I mean, yes, you, you're, you're an absolute success and an inspiration to us, man. I, I uh, appreciate thanks, bro. you. Yeah. I appreciate I'm you. How to be Rob out here, man. That's awesome, yeah, man. man. I appreciate you boys, man. Anytime, man. I enjoy, I enjoy the conversation, man, but anytime, man. No, we really appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have you back on. Yeah, we need more stories. Yep. Sure. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I got plenty. I got plenty to share, man. Yeah, we can get some <laughs> some some of the the challenges of my life. So we got more. Yeah. Let oh, me know when y'all ready, bro. Oh, we're running it back for sure. All right, sounds man. good, man. We really appreciate it, man. And thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, till next time, stay low and keep fire. Keep fire. I wanted to ask you, man, when y'all did y'all first podcast, Travis, where were you, bro? Somebody had like crickets in the background. I was like, yeah. what in the hell? Yeah, right. No, that's a good point because it was raining. It was in a studio. Oh, the so I built. So yeah, so I built the studio, and man. It was like we we listened afterwards, and we heard, oh, there's there's those raindrops. Yeah, it was like, you can't edit it, was, it, was, you can't edit it out. Tsunami up in that joint, bro. <laughs>